You are taking a live look over Ukraine's capital city of Kyiv right now. It is currently 8 a.m. there as reports of explosions that have gone off there and in the city of Kharkiv. We are starting tonight with that breaking news. NATO officials say a Russian attack on Ukraine is now underway. Good evening and thank you for joining us for Krem2 News at 10 tonight. I'm Mark Hanrahan. This coming just minutes after Vladimir Putin announced special military operations in eastern Ukraine. In a televised address this morning in Russia, Putin warned that if other countries attempt to interfere, Russia will respond with, quote, consequences they have never seen, unquote. Meantime, President Joe Biden is reacting on Twitter tonight, saying, quote, Russia alone is responsible for the death and destruction this attack will bring. He went on to say the world will hold Russia accountable. Meantime tonight, Ukraine says a full scale invasion by Russia is now underway. CBS News correspondent Deborah Alfaron is at the White House tonight with the breaking developments. Russian President Vladimir Putin announced in a televised address he has ordered a military operation in eastern Ukraine. He said there's no goal to occupy Russia's neighbor, but he warned if other countries attempt to interfere, there will be consequences they have never seen. That sounded like a fighter jet overhead. CBS News correspondent Charlie Daggett is in Kyiv, one of two eastern Ukrainian cities where explosions were heard overnight. Smoke was seen rising in Kharkiv. A 30-day state of emergency went into effect Tuesday night in Ukraine. Military reservists were called up. Resultat, Tishina. Ukraine's president appealed for peace in an emotional late night address and said he had tried to call Putin, but the result was silence. Police and security officers were sent to areas of eastern Ukraine that may be targeted. The UN Security Council gathered again Wednesday night for an emergency meeting. The United States and our allies and partners will continue to respond to Russia's actions with unity, with clarity, and with conviction. Satellite images show many Russian troops are within 10 miles of the Ukrainian border. Up to 190,000 of them are deployed, most in attack positions. The U.S. imposed more sanctions. There are options left now that Russia has announced a military operation. But the White House says it's important not to target certain sectors, which may end up hurting Americans. What we're trying to minimize is what impact there's going to be on the United States and global markets in a lot of ways. Putin also said he's intending to protect citizens. Deborah Alvarone, CBS News, the White House. Three to begin with. That sounded like a fighter jet overhead. Well, during a CBS special report when correspondent Charlie Daggett was reporting, fighter jets flew past coming into the city of Kyiv. He heard five loud explosions, three to begin with, followed by two more. Now, this happened at around 7.15 p.m. our time and 5.15 a.m. time their time. We want to take a moment now to break down some of the events leading up to these attacks. The tension started to rise at the beginning of December as Russian troops started to build up on the Russia-Ukraine border as a sign that Russia could invade. Now, repeatedly, Putin denied his intentions of invading Ukraine. NATO allies, including the U.S., started deploying military troops to countries outside of Ukraine in the scenario that Russia did move into the Ukraine across the border. Now, since yesterday, Russia violated international law by sending troops into what Putin classified as two independent territories. President Biden also created tough sanctions on Russia and cutting off their government from Western finance. At this point yesterday, 150,000 Russian troops had gathered at the border. We're implementing full blocking sanctions on two large Russian financial institutions. We've cut off Russia's government from Western financing. Taking a closer look at those sanctions imposed yesterday, not just by President Biden, but by other countries in the European Union as well. Germany announced it will now halt the $11 billion Nord Stream 2 pipeline that would have moved natural gas from Russia to Germany. To further bolster NATO's eastern flank, President Biden says he has authorized additional movements of U.S. forces and equipment to Baltic allies. President Biden announcing tonight on Twitter that he will be meeting with leaders of the G7 and allies to impose what he is calling severe sanctions on Russia. 
Meantime, members of Washington's congressional delegation are reacting to the attack on Ukraine tonight. Washington Senator Patty Murray tweeted, The Ukrainian people are being plunged into a deadly and devastating war because of the cruel ambition of one dictator. This conflict is totally fabricated, but its human toll will be very real. She continues, the democracies of the world must stand united with Ukraine and hold Putin accountable. Representative Dan Newhouse, who represents the state's 4th district, also took to Twitter tonight, writing, I stand with the people of Ukraine as they defend themselves against Putin's relentless aggression. President Biden must answer the call to protect our freedoms by standing up to Putin, immediately leveling severe sanctions against Russia and standing with our NATO allies. Well, this is a rapidly developing situation, and our team is working around the clock to get you the very latest. So make sure to watch Up With Krem starting at 5 o'clock tomorrow morning for the latest developments out of Ukraine.